Welcome to another segment of Provocative Conversations, destined to provoke further thought and spark greater questions regarding God, church, and the religious establishments of both the past and the present. I am the proud heretic, Mr. Provocateur himself. Hello. Today, I'm wanting to continue on with the topic, the subject of becoming a heretic or being labeled as a heretic. Focusing on two words specifically, heresy and being an actual heretic. Again, I stated that in theology, heresy is just an opinion or a doctrine that is contrary to the orthodox or our founding fathers, mainly the Catholic bishops of old. Many or it is alleged that, and perhaps even proven, that these so-called bishops of old had messier lives than you and I or you or I today, or even in our past, which should be alarming because of all of the uh, all of the trust that we put into bishops into men mere men that we never met that we never knew that we were never able to see their lives we don't know what type of life they lived yet we believe that They were unadulterated men and they had the pure word of God and they had all of this stuff. And I am one of the first to state that my past is not a pure past. That I am not within my own self worth or worthy enough to be utilized the way that I am being utilized and that I have been utilized over the past 20 somewhat years. However, because God is who God is and God's mercy endures forever, not his judgment, but his mercy, then I can stand boldly up under the grace, up under the the saving grace of God. And I don't want to use the saving grace of God as saying the the grace of God that saved me because I am learning more and more. And I'll speak about it at some other time that there was nothing to save me from, but me and God already had that wrapped up from the beginning. But this heresy deal, I kind of lost my thought there, but this heresy deal, it's just the, the word, the definition of it is just an opinion or a doctrine, the pushing of a doctrine that goes against the orthodox belief, the religious body, those priests and bishops and other writers of old, some people want to call them the saint, the saints. And then not only just pushing those opinions, but you maintain those opinions and doctrines. It's just any belief that is or is thought to be contrary to official theory or an established theory. Unfortunately, it's a term utilized to to uh, to gag 
people, whether it is used to gag the person who's teaching or preaching or spreading the heresy, or it's to gag those, the ears of those, and ultimately the mouths of those who uh, have have thought about or have been told about the heresy that a particular person or a particular group is teaching. So the churches and those in so-called biblical authority will put a memo out, whether it's over the pool pit, whether it's in the announcements, whether it's on tape, whether it's on video, however, they'll put it out a flashing warning about this heresy teaching. So now those who would listen or who have listened, they become gagged. They, it's like a judge issuing a gag order in a court system where you're not able to speak about a particular thing. You're not able to go any further than what is already known. In fact, you may not even be able to speak in regards to what is already known publicly. It's the belief in or the adherence to unorthodox opinions. Well, I can tell you this. I am somewhat orthodox in an indirect way, but I'm not orthodox because I'm flipping the boat. I'm not tipping it. I'm flipping it. Um, I'm not just coming against the bullish of the church. I'm trying to dismantle it. Now, not I, when I say the church, I'm really talking about the systems, the systematic control, the the systematic witchery, witchcraft involved in the church and involved in the orthodox uh, or in the orthodoxy, if I can say that that way. I come against it. So I would be one who would be labeled as spreading heresy by the mere definition itself for the most part. But heresy is the holding of a teaching, especially a religious teaching or an opinion that differs from the official opinion. Of course, if you belong to a church, the official opinion is of the pastor. Then the official opinion may be of the bishop. Then the official opinion in some churches may be of the deacons or of the board, or better yet, to, in today's world, church world now, the, 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 the big position to hold and to have is an apostle. So that person sets the tone. That certain sets the general belief or those persons. And if you don't buy into those beliefs, if you don't buy into, I forgot what you call those uh, those tenets, I think the tenets of the faith. Um, uh, I remember I grew up in the church of God and every Sunday, you know, we would be brainwashed. Now we didn't see it as being brainwashed then, but I can see where it was going now today. They would say, we believe. And then we, the leader would say, we believe. And then the person would say, or the audience, the, the, the congregation would say, in the verbal inspiration of the Bible, and then the person leading the tenants uh, 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 would say, we believe, and then the next one be, uh, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then they would say, the leader would say, whoever that leader was that morning or that day, we believe, and then the congregation would say, in um, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, and the Son are one. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit are one. They would say stuff like that. And you would just go through the list. And every Sunday, 
you would be programmed, you would be brainwashed. No, we didn't, I didn't, I don't want to say we, I was too young, too too ignorant to know the difference that I was being, it was really a form of brainwashing. And honestly, it was almost a form of um, just uh, indirect gagging. Because if you put that in a person's psyche long enough, then it'll gag them to even even fathom anything outside of the Trinity, to fathom anything outside of in baptism in the Holy Spirit, in speaking in tongues, or or uh, any of the other tenets that would be uh, set up, erected, and 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 then enforced strictly enforced. And if you go against those tenets, then we have to disassociate ourselves with you. Ultimately, that's generally what happens. Well, I would be considered a heretic because I break the tenets of the faith. I, I, I think in his day, Jesus was that heretic. He was, he was announced as, an her, as a heretic. They, the Pharisees and the Sadducees felt that he was a heretic and that he was doing the word of God and the word of Abraham and Moses and Jacob and all the, he, they felt that he was dismantling and discrediting God, the father saying he was cursing God and that he was doing all these crazy evil things in regards to God. Why? Because he didn't go with the, the, the tenets of that day. He did not go with the traditions of men. He didn't go with the customs of men, the custom, the customs of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians and all of these other people. I don't know if the Herodians were. I'll leave that alone because you got the Gnostics, the Herodians, and all these. I'm going to leave those alone. Um, I hadn't touched those areas in a while, so I'll leave those areas alone um, until I get a little refresher because I kind of left that area of study years ago. I mean, I was once an avid student of that stuff, but I've left that area now because I don't deal with the church world per se, uh, though I deal with the subject of the church world, not necessarily individuals of the church, within the church. However, I do know that these recordings will more than likely be heard by those of the church, those within the church, those under the umbrella of Christendom and, and other uh, uh, religions as well. And that's fine. You know, I let it go wherever it has been destined to go. Okay, so... As a heretic, I would be called such because I, would, I am a person who holds or teaches the opinions that go against the norm, go against the established or the establishment, the establishments of the church, those within the establishment or mints of the church. I go against that which is traditional because, again, when it comes to uh, traditions, I have an issue with traditions, and I've already stated my issues with traditions, but, again, uh, I want it to be known that I say to hell with religion, Christianity, church, and the traditions of the church that void out the truth and nullify the actual power of God from ever being effective within those institutions and through those institutions. So as you see, I have an issue with the church, the church that is of today. Now, whatever the significance of the church is or that of, of the body itself, supposedly the body of Christ Whatever the institution of church is to symbolize or is to reflect in a good way, in a wholesome way, I support all of that. 
but what the church has become and the 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 market meal that the church is now um becoming or has now become i come against that wholeheartedly i think that's a bunch of bull that's what i think and i don't think it's worth anything from face value i come against all of that so i would be considered a heretic because i uh i fight against that orthodox opinion i am very unorthodox in in a big way now um if i am one who does not conform conform to the established view or the established doctrine or the established principle which i am that one <laughs> who does not conform to the views and the doctrines and principles for the most part, now, some of the principles I do hold to. Why? Because I've come to understand that the principles that are put forth, uh, wherever those principles are put forth, whether it's through the Quran or the Bible or, or literature or uh, from, a, from, a, from a drunk, if those principles are worthy and 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 possess worth that would that would not devalue me but increase my value and increase my worth to both myself and to those that I come into contact with why would I not gravitate to those principles if a principle is based upon a truth if that truth transcends and continuously um, go forth in progressing me, my character, my personality, eh, personality, I don't know, my nature, eh, my, my, my ethics, my morals, my values, why would I not be a person um, attracted to that stuff. It doesn't matter about its origin. If all truth comes from God, regardless of who says it, regardless of where it's printed or posted, it's still good. Because if God made a created truth, it's all good. Doesn't matter where it comes from. And just to say, there is a verse that says everything that God has made is good, is pure, is good. So why call it evil or wrong or uh, blasphemy or blasphemous if it's good just because it came from a Quran? Just because the writings of Buddha, just because Hare Krishna or however you say that, or just because the Jehovah's Witnesses or just because the Catholic Church, it within itself is not deemed to be bad just because you don't believe in the source. You don't believe the source. You don't, you don't promote or... Um, embrace the source I'm looking at the source behind the source who is God there's a verse in the Bible that says all things are for him to him because of him and through him all things not some things but all things so there you have it that's where I come from. So, yes, I am a nonconformist. If, if, if you don't seek or if you don't desire uh, to be a, uh, how would I say it, a nonconformist, then you will conform to anything that's brought to you. 
I don't choose to believe anything that's brought to me. There's a verse that says, test the spirit by the spirit to see if it's of God. And it says, know those who labor among you. I got to know your sources. I have to know some things. There has to be something clicking inside of me, agreeing inside of me, whether it's the voice of God, whether it's the unctions of God, the presence of God, whatever. That has to be ringing loud for me to just accept whatever it is you say, whatever it is you're doing. So before I'm ever a conformist, I go in with the mindset to conform. But not to conform to anything, but to conform to just only the truth, if possible. Now, you may come through the back door on me with something, and I may get hoodwinked for a second, but I'm coming back. And then I'm going to shut that down. So, yes, I am a nonconformist. That's why. I proudly embrace the term itself, heretic. One who preaches and teaches heresy. Now, I only accept it because sometimes you have to beat your enemy or beat those who are contrary to you to the punchline. Sometimes you have to call it out before they call it out. There's a verse in the Bible, and it kind of plays as a principle to me in my, the background of my thinking and, 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 and my doings. And, and that is, um, if we would first just judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Meaning, if you would call out your own mess then you wouldn't be called to the carpet in regards to your mess not necessarily but also I take that verse to kind of play as a backdrop that if the mess that you're putting out on me or that they're putting out on me if I beat them to the punchline and call it whatever they want to call it or whatever they think they'll use as a weapon and call it, call it on me in regards to me, I'll call it out first. So those who hear my teachings and to hear my rants and to hear my, my provocative statements provoking greater conversations, Many will say, or some will say, some camps would say, he's a heretic. That's heresy. And because I've already been labeled as a heretic or as a false prophet, now, I believe there's a small difference I'm, I'm, I'm seeing where there's a, there's a, not a small difference, but there's just a difference between a heretic and a person who's just a false prophet. A false prophet is just one who he may be falsifying because he's just ignorant. He doesn't know. Then he may be just because he's in error or because he purposely set himself up or she uh, to, to, to be uh, an antagonist or someone who means no good and they mean to undermine uh, the good of a thing. I don't see it as necessarily being undermining to undermine a, 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 a school of thought or a, an established doctrine or belief or tenet of the faith that is not founded upon truth anyway. But now that thing is dominating the community or a particular group of people or whatever. I myself would come and get something like that maybe not out in the open in person, uh, then maybe I would. just depends on the situation and depending on how I feel that unctioning within me um, is leading me. So I am embracing the term 
heretic and my teaching being labeled as heresy or false prophet, though I'm not a false prophet at all. It is what it is. I'm just talking. Um, am I a heretic for real, for real? No. Not in the vehement sense that people use the term. But I am a heretic from the raw definition point of it. Maybe not from the Catholic definition of it, but from the raw definition of it, yes, I am a heretic in the sense that I go against the established norms, the established opinions, the established what the establishments behind the opinions and behind the tenets of faith and all of this stuff. Yes. Uh, but to really be one who preaches heresy, you first, it's, it's said that you first must refuse to be um, corrected. Anybody who knows me, knows that I don't have a problem in being corrected. In fact, that was one of the areas that I always worked on when it came to God. I never wanted to be considered um, a rebel in the negative sense. I wanted to be a rebel. I, don't, I, won't, I won't say I chose to be a rebel. I didn't want to be a rebel. But, but I relish in the fact that now I'm seen as a rebel because Maybe it'll make you think twice at coming against me, coming up at me with some, some, with some bulls because I'm not going for it. I don't go for it. I don't go for that okie doke. I don't go for that first thing. I don't go for first face value. Again, you may come at me uh, on a, at a particular moment on, at a, on, at a, in a particular day that I may be optimistic or whatever, more optimistic than other days, than other moments. And you may get one over on me, but buddy, I'm rebounding from that. When I, when I discover it, I'm rebounding. And generally I discover it before you even come to me. I see it. I see it coming. Anybody who knows me knows I call out stuff before it even happens. I'll tell you what a person is about upon meeting them and sometimes just upon hearing in regards to them i can tell you what they're about i can call it out that's just something that i have there that's what made me very effective in dealing with people and dealing with society's most uh most uh the society's most disrespected society's most unloved the society's uh, worst nightmares, society's throwaways. That's what allowed me to go into uh, uh, all types of prison settings, institutions, and sit amongst the, the rejected ones of society. And, you know, I'm not saying that these people were innocent. But it wasn't my job to go in there and call out their guilt or to call out their convictions or to call out their, 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 their wrongs, their, their uh, airings. Not in that sense. I, now I would call out when they would air in, 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 in within the institutions and they would be going against other communities and, and they would be going against each other and wanting to put hits out on each other. I would come against that when I would be in those institutions. But what I'm saying is I wasn't one to go in there thinking that God sent me here to judge you again. No, I wasn't double jeopardy in anybody. But I was all about helping uh, people to understand that God is not mad at them. God is not tripping over what they're tripping over, even if they trip. However, back to what I was saying, a person must refuse to be corrected when they're considered a heretic or they're, it's considered or it's been brought forth that they are a person of heresy. I've always wanted to stay true to God. I've always wanted to stay true to whatever it is that I'm teaching, that I'm preaching, that I'm promoting. I always wanted to stay true to it. And I have stayed true to it. I have definitely stayed true to it. Um, uh, a person who is ready to be corrected or who is unaware that what he has been saying is against church teachings is not a heretic. 
Now, when you're ready to be corrected and you're just talking because you're not even aware of certain things, certain truths, certain verses, certain principles, certain aspects of God, which many of us aren't. They, the church doesn't consider you a heretic necessarily. Now, the ignorant, the ignorant ones within the church will still consider you a heretic because they're so petty. Thank God that God's not petty. So they're so petty. So what happens is uh, if, the, if, if, if it's a petty group of people, if they're still on milk and they can't take meat, they'll consider anything that's not liquefied, anything that's not watered down, uh, as being heresy. But it says that if you're willing to be corrected, then you're not necessarily a heretic. Well, I'm going to tell you now, I'm willing to be corrected. I've always been willing to be corrected. I've always been willing to throw away my teachings and, and, and go further. Not being tossed to and fro by new winds of doctrines. No, I'm saying if you approach God and if you approach truth, as being progressive and understanding that uh, uh, the truth is we go from faith to faith, from grace to grace, from one dimension, from one level uh, to another, to a greater. If you understand that, then you won't be so messed up uh, in regards to whatever or you won't be so stuck in a particular teaching, in a particular thought, in a particular area of the faith that uh, that really uh, uh, gags you and holds you down more than it promotes the thing, more than it does in promoting the things of God and promoting your bet, the, the betterment of you, your character, your 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 personality, your person, your effectiveness with other people, with your family. But they, they, you know, it is said within the Catholic church, somewhat saying that a person must be baptized to commit heresy because in the, in the, in, in the Catholic arena, which is where most of our beliefs come from, within the Catholic arena of things, it's, it says that um, you, you can't be a heretic or you can't be one to commit heresy if you've never been baptized, if <laughs> physically baptized. And I guess some would say uh, the Pentecostal church or whatever, the evangelicals, they would say, you know, not just baptize physically, but baptize spiritually. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Uh, that's just, yeah, whatever. Um, that's a bunch of nonsense. But a person must be baptized to be a a heretic or to commit heresy because you don't even belong to God. You don't even know God. So you can't be one uh, spreading heresy. However, since I have been baptized and I've been physically baptized, baptized, whoop did do. When I was baptized, I did more sin after my baptism before I did in my baptism and somehow because I went down in that old polluted water that other people had slobbed in and 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 God knows whatever else in and then all of us got in and then we just muttered around and stuck our face in the man that's a that's it is what it is now if your conviction is that you have to be that then let every man uh, be convinced in his own mind. One man thinks that, you know, he can eat meat and another man thinks that he can only eat vegetables. Well, let every man be convinced in his own mind. But do understand that that's a small mindset if you don't think that all things have been made clean. If you don't think that uh, when it comes to God, this baptism and all of this stuff is not as weighty in the kingdom as you may think. That's what I'm saying about this here. Now, heresy or heresy, H-E-R-E-S-Y, it's an emotionally, it is said that it is, it is an emotionally loaded term that is often misused. And I think it is. I think it's misused with me because I don't have a wrong agenda. My objective is not wrong. My purpose is not wrong. Uh, 
uh, my motives are correct. They are in, in line with truth and wanting to do right. So people do use it in wrong terms. But when I say I'm the proud heretic, I am a proud heretic um, only from the aspect of or only toward, I only say that um, toward the people who call me a heretic. And my response is, I am the proud heretic. I am Mr. Provocateur himself. I am he. Uh, label me as a heretic if you must. If you must, that's on you. That's your call. To some degree, that's your call. Now, I, I, there's a verse in the Bible when Paul was talking to Timothy, and he said, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But they'll have, but having itchy ears, they will accumulate for themselves or heap up for themselves teachers to suit their own likings and will turn away from listen to, listening to the truth and wander into myths. Well, I can tell you this here. I am not one who does not hold to sound teaching. I hold to sound teaching. I can endure sound teaching. I endure, I yearn, I long for sound teaching. So that's definitely not me because I long for sound teaching because I understand that um, one thing that I understand about God that keeps me humble is that remember God's ways are not actually in line with your ways because I understand that God's ways and thoughts are beyond my human ability to, to ascertain and to break down and to, to, to house within me without him doing it for me, that my eyes cannot see unless he opened them, that my ears cannot hear without him opening them that I will see and not even see that I will hear and not even hear. I do my best and I strive to get on the wavelength that God operates on or that God is operating in, in any particular moment in time on any particular subject in time. So I am always open to sound teaching. Always. Now, I don't go looking for no preachers. I don't go looking for no churches. I don't care about any of that. That's not where I am right now. It is what it is. Say what, say what one must. It don't even matter. Then it says, but these people, speaking of people who will hear me, They'll have itchy ears and they will heap up for themselves or accumulate for themselves teachers that'll suit their own likings. They'll say to people who hear teachings such as what I teach that, look, remember the Bible said that there's going to come a great falling away and people won't be able to endure sound teaching, but they'll have itchy ears and they're wanting to hear whatever it is they're wanting to hear and, 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 and they'll pick and choose what they want to hear for their own likings and they'll turn away from listening to the truth and they'll wander into different myths and fables and, and, and old wise fables. All that, man, listen here. That's a bunch of hogwash for the most part. There's some truth in that, but this is not, I'm not found within this truth here. That is not referring to a person such as myself. However, if I, if I am to be labeled as a heretic, a person who's pushing heresy, then so be it. Let it be what it is. I accept that. I raise my hand and say guilty pretty much. And then it says they'll turn away from listening to the truth and they'll wander into myths. Well, I can tell you one thing. There's no myths in what I'm saying. The myths M-Y-T-H-S and what's being said is in what's being said, most of all by those in supposedly spiritual authority, those supposedly in, 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 in um, uh, 
the arena of Christendom, the arena of the churches, in the arena of leaders when it comes to religion. It's coming from them. It's not coming from me. I'm doing my best to, 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 to go through all the junk to get to the truth so that I can prevent it. Oh, no, pre- prevent it. That, so that I can present it. Some, some might say, yep, you're right, so that you could prevent the truth. There's nothing that I'm trying to prevent. And when I speak, I'm sure some people, because of their religion, all they hear is the fiery sound of hell just burning and just saying, God is raging. Hell is burning. Hell fire is coming near you. It's coming to you. You watch. You're going to go to hell. You're going to reap what you sow. And sowing all of this fake stuff is coming at you. Man, please. I am not afraid of any of it. I'm not afraid of any of it. God is going to strike you dead. He's going to get you. Yeah, he's mad. He's angry. He's coming at you. He's going to stop this talk. He's going to stop your tongue. No, man, I'm not concerned about that. I'm better than that. God is better than that. I'm better than that because of God. I don't concern myself with that stuff. Now, what I will say is this. I, I would like to uh, uh, mention a few things that, that uh, to go along with what I just stated there. There's another verse that says, but it was because of the false brethren secretly, secretly brought in. A false brother secretly brought into the community, brought in to the radio waves, brought into the podcasting arena who had sneaked in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ in order to bring us into bondage. I'm not sneaking in anywhere. I'm coming in boldly. I'm, I'm, I'm announcing my presence and I'm like Jesus. I'm coming in to Jerusalem on a donkey lowly. I'm not trying to fight anybody. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm just trying to come and 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 share the I, I want to say my truth, but this is greater than my truth because I didn't orchestrate this, nor did I author this. I am speaking the truth as it has been presented to me. And the presentation of most of these truths, like 90-something percent of these truths, somewhere in that arena, in that area, came from God himself to me within my life, within my dealings with him. Now, most people have it the opposite. They have maybe 10% or less of what they know came from God, and then the rest of it came from man, came from an institution, came from the came from the Catholic influence, came from the Roman influence, came from the Greek influence, came from the Pharisee, Sadducee type uh, individuals or clubs, then 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 from God or the Spirit Himself. And they're looking to bring you into bondage. I'm not trying to bring anybody into bondage. That's why I'm not a true heretic. But I will say, I'm not trying to bring you into bondage. If anything, I'm trying to get you to be free from bondage. I'm trying to help you free yourself or free your mind from bondage, from the bondage of whatever it is that is holding you back and won't allow you to go forth. And, and for the most part, it's because of your belief. It's because of your perspective of God, the concept you hold of God. That's why we're stuck in the areas that we're stuck in. That's why we're stuck in the arenas that we're stuck in, in the churches that we're stuck in. There's another verse that says, if you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of this world, the elementary principles of this world, that small talk, that dumb stuff, that baby stuff, that brainwashing stuff. Why, as if you were living in the world, do you submit yourselves to those decrees, to those things, yet still, yet again, such as do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, 
which all refers to things destined to perish with youth, with use in accordance with the commandments and teachings of men. Really what it's saying is, why are you stuck on all of this elementary teaching, all these elementary uh, supposed principles, all these element, elementary teachings of men, these elementary uh, teachings of, um, of unlearned men, of ignorant men, women too, but I'm just saying men as human beings in general, do not handle, do not this, do not that, do not. Man, we need to move on from the elementary principles of things and we need to go into areas that may label us as being heretics, that may label our teachings as being teachings of heresy because it tends to go against the tenets of a particular belief, a particular system, a particular group. There's another thing, another verse that says, but we have not or have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. On the other hand, uh, or, may, or for old women, old women, um, it says, but on the other hand, discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness. But basically what I want to highlight is the fact that have nothing to do with worldly fables. People will say that, the things that I teach are just fables. These are not fables. The fables are coming from the church. The fables are coming from the religious leaders. Some of it is by ignorance. Some of it is because of personal gain and manipulation. And it all has to do with money, power, and some, 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 some sex. That's what it's got to do with. It's got all of that money, power, sex. Money, power, sex. That's what it's about. It's all about that. Not all, but a lot of it is about that. Trust that. It's about that. Now, um, I could go to another one that says um, <clears throat> people such as myself who come out and I'm, I, I say the things that I say and, and they'll say, uh, people will say to you or to others, or you'll hear it said, these are springs without water and mists, M-I-S-T-S, mists driven by the storm. In other words, it's really saying um, when you see a spring, a well or a water body or a body that should contain water, and then you're thirsty or whatever, and you go to that 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 spring and there's no water there. You're like promising something, but then you don't deliver on it. Or like the wind is blowing and the air is kind of damp and the clouds are dark and it looks like a storm is coming and needed rain is on its way, but then it never delivers for whom the black darkness has been reserved saying hell itself is reserved for you. It's coming. Black darkness has been reserved. And if you hear, if you can hear the spirit, you will hear the fiery, the fiery cracklings of hell itself. The heat is getting harder, hard, hotter and harder, hotter. The, the, the atmosphere is getting more and more loaded with heat waiting for people such as myself. For speaking out arrogant words of vanity, they entice by fleshly desires, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error, promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by what a man is overcome, this he is enslaved to. In other words, it's basically saying people will come to you such as myself and I will speak vain words and I'll promise you, you know, fleshly desires or sensuality, stuff that heaping up, you know, having itchy ears, wanting to hear what you want to hear, stuff that'll that'll entertain your flesh, entertain your carnality or whatever have you, what, what have you. But in actuality, that's really what the religious world is doing. That's what preachers are doing. That's what prophets and evangelists and, and, and ministers and, 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 and apostles and, and bishops are doing. They're coming with the fleshly desires. They're coming with the women. They're coming with the sensuality. They're coming uh, 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 with uh, a life that barely exemplifies 
anything in regards to God, yet you see them and they look promising and they promise you a freedom that they themselves don't have. When they themselves, like it says, are slaves of corruption themselves. However, you're going to have to be wise enough. Um, the Bible talks about being wise as a serpent. The Bible talks about know those who labor among you. The Bible talks about uh, uh, study to show yourself approved, being able to rightly divide. But if you're not careful, the last part of that says, for by what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. You know, it's a messy thing that, how would I say this? We come out of the world. We come out of the messiness of a particular relationship that is not wholesome. We come out of a life of selling drugs, hoeing out, stealing, using drugs, substance abuser, um, criminality of all sorts, even of the worst sort. We come out of all of that stuff and then we go into the church arena and the very thing that is offered to us to help us to overcome all of those things how the Bible says, for you have overcome the world and all that is within it. But yet it says the very thing that you were promised and were supposedly given to overcome those things is the very thing that you've become enslaved to. The system itself the systematic enslavement of Catholicism, the systematic enslavement of just a book that the people who preach it or preach from it don't even agree with, don't even believe, won't even live. Jesus made a statement like this. He said, you hypocrites. He said, you sit here and you, 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 not, you, you, you choke at a, at a gnat, but then you swallow a hippopotamus. Basically, that's what he was saying. You, 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 you put these heavy loads and these heavy burdens on people claiming that there's freedom in this when you yourself are a slave to your own flesh, to your own weaknesses, to the things that you know are not right, but you're practicing them and you're using church funds and, and, and church influence, religious influences to, to fatten your own calf, you. Now these people are more enslaved than they ever were, but now they're enslaved to a worse system the religious system, the church system. The Bible says you yourself can't live free. You yourself are not living free. And you put these heavy yokes on other people for them to live what you can't live. And then you promise them freedom. But in the end, they become twice the sons of hell or twice the sons of enslavement as you yourself were. So I come against that stuff. I come against all of it. And then someone will say, um, did he just say that? I mean, did he actually just say that? And what I say is, yes, I said that. And then I also say, and I will always say to hell with religion, Christianity, church, and the traditions of the church that void out the truth and nullify the actual power of God from ever being effective within those institutions and through those institutions. One verse says, so put away all malice and all deceit. Deceit 
That's what it's about. And people will say, I'm deceiving. No, the deceit is the lie. The the deceit is the ignorance that's being taught. The deceit is embedded within the, the, the annuals, within the history books, in regards to Catholicism and the Catholic bishops and, and King James and the influences and all the happenings in that time period. It says, put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. Hypocrisy. That's what I don't want to be. Jesus would say, you hypocrite. I don't want to be one of hypocrisy. I don't want to be one to step on my own teachings. Now, that doesn't mean I don't step on them at times, but as soon as I'm aware of it, I want to change that. I want to work with that. So put away all malice and all deceit. One thing I'm not about, I'm not about deceiving anyone. I don't want anyone to be deceived. I don't want to be a deceiver. I'm not about deceiving anybody, anybody. I don't want to be a deceiver. I don't want to be seen as that. I don't want to be known as that. I'll take being a hypocrite. I'll take being one who teaches and preaches heresy because that puts me in great company. And most of the people who would call me such are people who are ignorant to the truth themselves, ignorant to the things of God themselves. So they don't understand anything anyway. So they talk about everything that they themselves don't even understand. So I'm not talking about that. I'll take those things. Well, I am talking about that, but I'll take being called that. But all that hypocrisy and deceit, I'm not about being a hypocrite, and I'm not about deceiving anybody. I don't want to be a deceiver. I don't want to be a liar in that sense. I don't want to be that. So, this is why I call myself the proud heretic. Now, I think I'll go on a little further so that we can hit a couple other things, and within those things, uh, in, in the next recording, I'll be able to share even greater truths or greater sayings in regards to the subject of uh, becoming a heretic and, and, or being a heretic and uh, who is a heretic, mainly myself, at least it's stated that I am. But until the next recording, thank you for listening.